Hello everyone and welcome to Jesus' Lord Fellowship Worldwide International. I am Senior Fatora Dr. Diana Brevan of Jesus' Lord Fellowship Worldwide International. <laughs> this is an amazing day. Why? Because you have life today. Amen. And our Savior Jesus Christ has risen just for your life today. Amen. Which made you his living sacrifice. Amen. Amen and amen. Folks, this has been an amazing year so far in our Bible studies, in your certified Bible study users, certified GPA. Anybody who wants to join and you would like to do studies no matter where you're located in your comfort zone and sit down and study the Word of God and receive a certification, a GPA certification at the end of the year, come on down. Send in your, your email or if you could go to any of the websites or on Facebook and, and copy and paste the weekly studies that we post on Mondays. Please fill out that the the sign up sheet at the bottom each time when you do it because that applies towards your credits and send it in. And for the grace of God I will automatically place you right in and through the Lord's grace get you started. Amen. Uh, we are on this week, Mark chapter 6, part 1. There is so much to go into in the, into the Word of God. And um, that's why this is all formatted into different parts as we study the Word of God. Amen. That's what I said, that we get into some really deep studies. Intense studies. Amen. Um. Through the Lord's grace, this midweek service will be conducted by your senior fatora, Dr. Diana Brevon. Amen. Uh, Deacon Matthew will be doing midweek service again April 19th. Amen. Um, the tithes and offerings in Matthew chapter 10, 42, Jesus promised. Our Savior promised. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, assuredly I say to you, he shall by no means lose his rewards. When you give to Jesus' his Lord Fellowship World International, you are giving a virtual cup of cold water to tens of thousands daily. How, you ask? By enabling Jesus' his Lord Fellowship World Wide International to daily satisfy their spiritual thirst in this virtual world of the internet where we minister to homes throughout the world. We also supply the needs by posts worldwide. Please consider sending us your regular tithes and your regular offerings. May the Lord richly bless each and every one of you. We do pray that our fellowship does minister to you on Sundays and throughout the week on a daily basis. God bless you and have the blessed Jesus-filled Sunday. We daily are available to assist each and every one of you daily in all of the areas of your lives through Jesus' Lord Fellowship Worldwide International. Amen. My name is Senior Patora, Dr. Diana Brevon. Today, let us remember to pray today for everyone within ourselves. Amen. For everyone within ourselves, let us pray for. For all of, our, of the needs in health, for all of the needs in wealth, for all of the needs in happiness, for all of the needs in spiritual well-being, all of the needs in spiritual growth. Also, let us pray for, there has been so many emails that has been sent in for depression. Those who have been facing the spirit of depression or family members in the spirit of depression. 
Let us also pray for so much things that's been going on in our nation. We need to pray as a family of God, as sons and daughters of our Savior, and we need to pray for our nation. And it's on a daily basis. You just don't pray during election time. You pray every single day of the week as you raise your hands, you touch the hem of the Lord's garment, and you pray for each and every one. Amen? Amen and amen. As we pray also, let us hold up all of the prayer requests that we have held and received this past week. Let us also be in agreement with all the unspoken prayers that lays deep within our hearts. Let us lift up all of those that have been called as prayer warriors. God bless all of the prayer warriors worldwide. Amen. That they may have the Lord's strength as they pray with a hedge of protection may surround them and all of their families. Let us also pray for the needs of every local church, including the needs of our Jesus is Lord Fellowship Worldwide International. Let us also ask the Lord our God for provisions so that his church may be able to continue to work that he has set aside for it. Let us pray for those that have been called to leadership in his church, that they may have strength and a godly vision at all times. Let us place a hedge of protection wrapped around leaders and their family so that they may be healed from all health situations. Amen. Let us pray as we listen to, to our hearts today. As the Holy Spirit moves our hearts today and our inner soul will be open to the words so that we may feed freely upon the message and drink from the Holy Spirit. May the Lord richly bless you today around the globe. I'm Senior Patora, Dr. Diana Prevana, Jesus is Lord Fellowship. Now, please prepare yourselves and open up your word or open up Bible Gateway to Mark chapter 4, verses 22 to 34. Mark chapter 4, 22 to 34. Today's message is four lessons from familiar objects. Four lessons from familiar objects. Today's Bible reading again is Mark chapter 4. 22 to 34 what is spiritual life like folks what is spiritual like uh, life like Jesus used parables to help us better understand amen mark chapter 4 33 to 34 with many similar parables Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand he did not even say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. Spiritual life is just another way of saying the kingdom of God. It has to do with our relationship with God. Being in his kingdom, under his rules, amen, and fulfilling his purpose. Let's note here, verse 30. Again he said, What shall we say to the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable should we use to describe it? Jesus asked a question, getting his listeners to participate in the search for understanding. This evening, we will look at these familiar objects that gives us our four lessons here. Amen? The first is the oil lamp. The second is the bushel basket. The third is growing plants. The fourth is the mustard seed. Amen? The first the oil lamp is your spiritual life, which is illuminating. Amen. Jesus said to them, 
Jesus said to them, Do you bring in a lamp to put it under a bowl or a bed? Instead, don't you put it under on a stand? Whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed. And whatever is concealed is meant to be brought out into the open. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. That is Mark chapter 4, 21 to 23. Mark chapter 4, 21 to 23. My memo note to you today is, amen, my memo note, the normal interpretation of these verses here is don't hide your light. Let your light so shine. Ouch. Excuse me. Uh, let your light so shine. Much like, like the little Sunday school song that I used to love. And uh, I used to love hearing my daughter sing this song so much. And then, um, this little light of mine. But we need to, to read the next verse. This illumination brings light to what is otherwise hidden. There are two applications here. The first is the first is can, uh, the first is we may not even understand how but we will because it will be revealed. Connect this with the first part of verse 24 here. Amen? Ours is the responsibility to consider. In other words, the responsibility here is ours for what we hear. Mark chapter 4, 24, And he said unto them, Take heed, but ye hear. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that is that here shall more be given. The NIV version states, consider carefully what you hear. Because the parables are so different in what they teach. Amen? Jesus warned the people to pay attention to his word. Those who heard, understood, and then shared with others would be given even more understanding to pass along. Believers are responsible to use well their God-given understanding and their God-given insight. Amen? Their God-given... Uh, understanding to pass this along. Believers are responsible to use their well as I just shared. Their God-given understanding and insight, folks, and opportunities to share the gospel. Whether they have little or much. That's not nearly as important as what is done with what they have. It's the measure with which they give that determines what more will be given. Even then, still more will be given because pers a person's openness and perception of the kingdom message will be great rewards. Will bring you great rewards, folks. Let's ultimately... Okay, ultimately, believers will receive eternal blessings in heaven. Amen? Ultimately, they will receive eternal blessings in heaven. Second, what we think is 
private will become known. As Jesus said elsewhere, men love darkness. Why? Because their deeds are evil. And that's John chapter 3, 19. Amen. But the word of God declares, For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall be known, that shall not be known. That's Luke 12, 2. Luke chapter 8, 17. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Amen. Ecclesiastes 12.14 states, For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. There's nothing that can be hidden before our Lord our God. No, not one. Perhaps we sometimes behave as if God doesn't even see. But nothing goes unnoticed by him. Nothing. Let's note here that spiritual gifts are in operation or are manifested. In a church service, one purpose is to reveal the sinful condition of a sinner to the sinner. Do you understand? See 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 24 to 25. 1 Corinthians 14, 24 to 25. But if all prophecy and there come in one that believes not, or one unlearned, he is convinced of all. He is judged of all. And thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest and so falling down on his face. He will worship God and report that God is in you of the truth. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 24 to 25 in the NIV. But if an unbeliever or someone who does not even understand comes in a while, everyone is prophesying, he will be convinced by all that he is a sinner and will be judged by all. And the secrets of his heart will be laid bare. So he will fall down and worship God. Exclaiming God is really among you. Let's read here John chapter 1. 4 to 5. John chapter 1 verses 4 to 5. In him was life. And the life was the light of man. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehend it. Overcome it not. The deception is one of the greatest evils on earth, folks. Deceiving others is the short step away from self-deception. Thus we find the value of confession here. With God, you can run, but you cannot hide, folks. Remember Adam and Eve trying to hide from God in the garden. They were not at any all successful. There's something about the presence of the Lord our God that causes a man to recognize his lowly state, his sinful and ungodly status. And when we live the spiritual life, it's illuminating. Many years ago in, in, in Bible college, I wrote the following down in the pages of my Bible. Darkness cannot come to where light is. But light can go anywhere darkness is. God is light. The reality here is, if we're living in the light, 
We cannot even become the darkness. And the light in us illuminates what is hidden in the dark corners of one's heart. That's why Paul said that if an unbeliever comes into a church where the power and the presence of God is, the secrets of his heart will be laid bare. They will be illuminated and revealed. God's light shines into the darkness. And the darkness cannot overcome the light. Amen. John chapter 1 verse 5. Bushel baskets. Spiritual life is valuable. What is the next one? The next one that I asked you to, to write down the four points at the beginning of the service. The next one is bushel baskets. A bushel basket is spiritual life which is that valuable. Consider carefully what you hear. Amen. Let's read now Mark chapter 4, 24 to 25. And he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear, with what measure ye meet. It shall be measured to you, and unto you that hears shall more be given. For he that hath to him shall be given, and he that hath not from him shall be taken, even that which he hath. This is the second reference to listening, folks. Spiritual life brings a return, and more it builds on its own, and more that it builds on its own. It is self prep Perpetual, okay? It has a life of its own. And if you value it, it will increase. Otherwise, it will diminish. Okay? It is self-perpetuating. Excuse my tongue tied this morning. Glory to God. Spiritual life is like the oil that does not even fail, folks. That's what spiritual life is all about. Amen. It's oil that never fails, that never runs out. Elijah and the widow woman in, in 1 Kings chapter 17. Please write this down so you could go there and you could feed it upon your own timing. Or as Jesus said in Luke chapter 6, 38, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall man give into the into his bosom, into your bosom? For with the same measure that you meet, with it, with all, shall it be measured to you again. Often this message is misused. Do you understand me? Often this message that. I just shared from this scripture is misused in the scriptures. Amen. And we think of it only as in a materialistic way. Give lots of money so that you can get even more back. <laughs> what does it mean? It is that the benefits will far outweigh the sacrifice, folks. That's what it means. But the statement, whoever does not have even what he has, will be taken from him. And it seems quite odd here. But do you remember the story of the talents? Folks, do you all remember the story of the talents? To value is not to hoard. To value is to give. Growing plants. Let's go to growing plants, folks. Number three on the list that I had just given you. Growing plants. Spiritual life is hidden power. Growing plants equals to spiritual life is hidden power. Now let's read Mark chapter 
4, verses 26. Mark chapter 4, verses 26. And he said, So is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up? He knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. At first the blade, then the ears. After that is the full corn in the ears. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickles, because the harvest is come. Mark chapter 4 verses 26 to 29 in the NIV version states, He also said, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed in the ground night and day. And whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows. And though, though it does not know how, all by itself, the soil produces grain. First the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts that sickle. Folks, please uh, highlight Mark chapter 4, 32, 4, 31 and 32. Amen. Uh, put this in your reading notes to read. We have a lot to go through today. Amen. But um, your pastoral note here today is through the Lord's grace of, of the readings that we just did. At times, we may feel so small within our lives, within us, that we feel so utterly useless. Remember the mustard seed tree, folks, coming from such a small seed. This bush, it provides refuge to many birds. What is the church application here? What is the church application? The simple, okay, it is very, very simple here. In growing a bush, there's many branches. Amen? There is many, many branches here. Much fruit and many birds. Amen? Just watch this, folks. In this parable, Jesus was stressing that his kingdom would have a small beginning, which it indeed had 12 apostles and a few hundred other followers. The mustard seed was the smallest seed a farmer of that time used. The, the smallest known seed at that time. He did so to, illum, to illustrate the relativity of a large plant growing from a small seed. The mustard seed was so small that it would take almost 20,000 seeds to make one once. Amen? But yet, out of that very small beginning, he grew a church so large and so powerful that it shook the very foundation of the world. Jesus stressed the future greatness of the kingdom, folks, which at that time it seemed so insignificant that he also showed that the kingdom had small beginnings but would grow and produce great results. Indeed, it has a countless millions that have given their lives to the cause of Christ over the past 2,000 years. So in today's conclusion of, the, of today's 
sermon message. I pray that you learn from the oil lamp. Amen. From the oil lamp, which equals to your spiritual life, which is illuminating. Number two, your bushel basket, which is your spiritual life, which is valuable. Number three, your growing plants, which is your spiritual life, which is hidden power. The mustard seed, folks, that spiritual life, it blesses other people. We are, folks, a life-changing ministry, a growing ministry, and a going ministry, a ministry, and a praying ministry. This is a growing ministry, a ministry that brings you the results. I pray that you rejoice with our Savior during this Easter season. I pray that you walk within his presence. I look forward for Wednesday's sermon that, that, that you are about to receive this midweek. Deacon Matthew will not be teaching this Wednesday. It will be your senior pastora, Dr. Deanna Brevon, for the Easter, uh, for, for the midweek service this week. And also, of course, for Sunday. Um, my name is Senior Patora, Dr. Deanna Brevon of Jesus is Lord Fellowship Worldwide International. Please visit us in all of our websites and please go to www.jesusislordfellowship.bravehost.com and please go there to the guest book and fill out that guest book. Amen. Fill out the guest book and through the Lord's grace, um, let us know what you receive out of out of this ministry. Amen. And also, please send us out um, prayer requests. Send us out your whatever you can to P.O. Box twenty seven fifty two, Inverness, Florida. Jesus is Lord Fellowship Worldwide International. Attention to Dr. Deanna Brevon, USA Headquarters, P.O. Box 2752, Inverness, Florida, 34452. Um, would love to hear from you. Your senior pastora, Dr. Deanna Brevon, has been working out very hard. Uh, the Lord opened up various doors, which I'm really excited about. And I've been very busy. Even though it's strenuous for me, but um, the Lord has been opening up doors with your pastor's health. And I've been working out a lot of different strenuous exercises in different classes at the Y. And I've been going there and I also have a personal trainer who's also working on my body. Uh, this past two weeks, he's been working on my lower half of my body. Amen. Um, and through the Lord's grace, I can't wait till he starts working on the, the upper end. But I am taking it one day at a time because it took our Savior so long for me to get to where I am today. Amen. And I'm alive. In April of 2010, I think it was. April 23rd, 2010. I had a rose from the surgery table as well, from death. I, I died on the surgery table. And, and today I am alive. And I am here spreading the gospel. And praying in this ministry to open up more doors. And the Lord has been working. Wow. And moving. This past month. This whole past month within this ministry, he's starting to move. Amen. Especially first with my health, um, as well as Mr. Jesus Brevon just retiring. He's still not accustomed yet with the retirement, but he is coming along. Glory to God. I just wanted to say, have the most blessed Jesus-filled Sunday. But make sure 
every lasting moment of your life is spent with the Lord besides you, behind you, within you, and Him holding on to you. Do not let Him go. That's my message for you today. Amen. My recommendation to you, don't let Him go. When trials get really heavy, or depression comes about, get into the promises. Get into your word. Read also the words of Jesus Christ. Go into to any of my websites. Go into the daily Bible readings. And get into the Bible reading of the words of Jesus Christ. But make sure the Lord Jesus Christ is with you. Amen. Do not have him separate from you. Pray also for this ministry. Amen. Um, pray also for every open door that the Lord is leading. He is surely preparing me. I'll tell you the truth. I had an amazing week. There's uh, at the beginning, it was very tough and very, you know, rough with, with the movements and everything. But I have amazing trainers right now that's been working with me one day at a time one moment at a time that's why you haven't seen me for you know full time lately for the past few weeks but i still am making my way to make a schedule and to make a difference in your lives and to spend various time with you in prayer and making sure that the holy spirit will move within you and your family's life within prayer. Amen. So send them in because I anoint you daily. Amen. And I just wanted to say Deacon Matthew Helmich and, and your very own Senior Patora Dr. Deanna Brevon, Jesus' Lord Fellowship is here for you. And we will never leave you. We will never forsake you because we love you just as Christ. Amen. God bless you, family of the Lord. I love you all. Have the most blessed, Jesus-filled, amazing Sunday with Christ by your side. Amen. Oh, and also, my babies with paws, Patches, and Sophia loves you as well. <laughs> God bless you all. Have the most blessed, Jesus-filled Sunday.